Hello everyone and thank you for being here. My name is Heather Ireland Robinson and I'm the Executive Director of the Jazz Institute of Chicago. And I'm coming to you today from 74th and Rhodes on the south side of Chicago. I'm standing here because it is the block on which my paternal grandparents lived. Actually own that building right over there. They migrated here from the south in the 1920s. And I'm standing here because their story is also the story of so many African Americans who left the South to come to the North to find better opportunity for their families. And it is also the story of jazz, migrating up from New Orleans, coming up the Mississippi River to Chicago. I'm also here because it's just a stone's throw from the new apartment lounge and we know how much that place means to Chicago jazz. So from the South side to the North side, from Louis Armstrong to Gerard and Brandon tonight, you will hear just a part of the story of jazz. Listen to a little music and learn a bit about the Jazz Institute of Chicago programming. And we hope support this great cause. We thank you for taking some time to spend with us. And now, on with the show. I have not traveled the world, but I have seen a few cities. I'll admit where I reside can be tough and nitty gritty, but I live in this city on the lake, where my livelihood, presenting music, is the way I make my living and feed my spirit. And if you listen, you sure will hear it. See, Chicago has a lot of jazz. Thanks to institutions and organizations, we still herald the music that has enriched this nation. From Africa's shores and by way of the Great Migration, those formerly thought of as chattel earned standing ovations, creating improvisations we now call jazz. Up from the Delta, they came for club work. 1923, OK started making records for the race. Boogie Woogie Blues pianists played rent parties that got them through the Great Depression. That flood of blacks from the South meant more cafes, dance halls, restaurants, movie houses, and cabarets in the bright light districts of the South Side of the city. Joseph King Oliver made the rounds in this town, brought the great Louis Armstrong who came back around and innovated jazz phrasing. Their impact was amazing. Chicago gave them fertile ground where the music could spread around and around with a distinguished Chicago jazz sound. From the beginning, gave it a foundational platform where dedicated musicians developed this art form. Through the decades, we have witnessed their resilient spirit. And if you listen, you surely will hear it. It's jazz in Chicago, Chicago jazz. Oh, jazz loves Chicago. And these Chicagoans love jazz. The old checkerboard on 43rd was the last of duke joints in urban neighborhoods. 75th Street had many jam spots that did jazz some good. Not saying there were no joints jumping in the north or west parts of town. Just speaking from experience and what I've mostly been around. And I've been told the Tim Pan Alley got nothing on pop spinning records playing jazz in the alley, growing art organically, the ways that we Chicagoans savor moments on bandstands, whether the players or the fans. See, audiences feed on the jazz in Chicago, and musicians love being hosted at the festivals and shows. So many famed ones living on either coast once found this Midwestern metropolis host germinated on Chicago grounds was that new creative music craved for miles around. I love jazz and jazz loves me. I need jazz and jazz needs me. It feeds me. It leads me intelligently to enjoy community. What the world needs now is more love, sweet love, 
So I'll be loving jazz in my sweet home, Chicago. Home. Well, jazz has a happy tone of encouragement. And then in most of jazz, the lyricy is humorous and all at the same time personally informative. Hello and welcome to the Jazz Institute of Chicago's Virtual Gala. I'm Rajiv Halim. And I'm Bobby Wilson. And thanks for tuning in to Chicago Loves Jazz. Join us as we celebrate our favorite city. Chicago. And our favorite musical art form. Jazz. Tonight we will take you on a tour of Chicago's well-loved jazz spaces while highlighting the mission and vision of the Jazz Institute of Chicago to nurture and promote jazz in this great city of ours. Together, we will travel through the city, stopping at jazz clubs, city landmarks, and the hidden corners that we miss so much. This is a virtual love letter to the city and music that brings us all together as it has for over 100 years. And this evening, you too can be a part of the future of jazz. By clicking on the link in the comments or visiting jazzinchicago.org, you can make a significant impact on Chicago jazz and preserve its rich cultural legacy. For tonight's trip, we will start here on Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago at the famed Fine Arts Building. Originally constructed for Studebaker buggy sales, it was converted to artist studios and performance spaces in 1898. Icons such as Wizard of Oz author L. Frank Baum, sculptor Laredo Taft, and architect Frank Lloyd Wright all had studios here. It is now the proud home of the Jazz Institute administrative offices. Let's head on up to hear Jazz Link students from the Kiewit Wang Mentorship Program. These elite young musicians were chosen and then allowed to select the artists of their choice for mentorship, development of their technical skills, training. So come on, let's give a listen. Thank you, MTs. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Jazz Institute of Chicago's Gala. Chicago loves jazz. My name is John Foster Brooks, and I'm the Education Manager and Student Council Coordinator here at the Jazz Institute of Chicago. I'm also a Jazz Links alumni. Um, to, to get us started with this wonderful evening, we are here in the Fine Arts Building right across the hall from the Jazz Institute of Chicago's office to present you a combo of Key with Wayne Scholars and a Jazz Links alum as well. The Kiewit Wayne program was started by the generous donation from Marjorie Kiewit and the JIC board member at the time, Dick Wayne, and his wife, Vanya, whose son, Eric, to this day ensures that it is continued. Our band members of today are consisted of Leo Milano on saxophone, Brandon Harper on piano, Michael Collier on bass, and Frank Morrison on drums. I hope you enjoy. <laughs>
Thank you, John. Those are some fabulous high school musicians. And now for a special message from Jazz Institute of Chicago Board President, David Helverson. Thank you, Bobby and Rajiv. I'm Dave Helverson, and I'm the Board President of the Board of Directors of the Jazz Institute of Chicago. And again, welcome. I'm standing here in the choral rehearsal room at the Pritzker Pavilion in Millennium Park, where just a few floors down, we present our annual Chicago Jazz Festival with our partners, the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. This year, we were thrilled to be back in person for Chicago In Tune, and we're all looking forward ahead to 2022 when we'll back, be back in person again. Tonight, I have the honor of presenting our foundation program and operations sponsors. The Alfred Foundation, the Benjamin Rosenthal Foundation, the City of Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, Crown Family Philanthropies, Cultural Treasures, the Dan J. Epstein Family Foundation, Doris Duke Foundation, the Darling Family Foundation, the Lloyd A. Fry Foundation, the Gaylord and Dorothy Donnelly Foundation, Illinois Arts Council Agency, the Andrew Mellon Foundation, the Oppenheimer Family Foundation, the Polk Brothers Foundation, the MacArthur Fund for Arts and Culture at Prince, and the Walder Foundation. You too have the opportunity to invest in our programs, our youth, and the future, future of jazz with your donations tonight. Just click the link in the comments below, snap the QR code with your phone, or visit our website at jazzinchicago.org and click the gala invite. Donors of $25 or up tonight will receive a special gift, a lapel pin that commemorates the centennial of Louis Armstrong's arrival in Chicago in 1922. You can wear it proudly as the Jazz Institute presents a full slate of programming throughout 2022 to celebrate this exciting moment in jazz history. Now let's join our board member, Rajiv Haleem, at the Fulton Street Collective. Thanks, Dave. I'm here at 1821 West Hubbard Street at the Fulton Street Collective, a membership-based gallery and performance space, and home to Chris Anderson's Jazz Record Art Collective, a live music series that features a regular lineup of performances of reinterpretations of iconic jazz records, among other performances. Let's go in for the first Jazz Excellence Award of the night. Thank you, Rajiv, and welcome everyone to the Fulton Street Collective. I am Adriana Prieto, Program and Marketing Manager for the Jazz Institute of Chicago, and I am very proud to be here to present our Irma Pickens Outstanding Jazz Advocate Award to Chris Anderson. Chris is the Events Manager and Booking Agent for Fulton Street Collective. He is an experienced business manager and promoter by day and passionate musician by night. An avid drummer, Chris has been integrated in the music scene of Chicago for decades. He was a primary booking agent at Evanston's Nevins Life and served as manager to Chicago's famed Green Mill Tavern for more than a decade. The Jazz Institute of Chicago has partnered with Chris and the Fulton Street Collective since 2016 for our members' jazz chat and in producing programs such as International Jazz Day this year. During the pandemic, Chris and his team have led Chicago in producing live jazz and broadcasting it almost every night via the Fulton Street Collective's YouTube channel. The constant programming of live jazz kept Chicago musicians busy and employed during the lean months of shutdown and limited indoor gatherings. Chris and his team produced over 100 live streams in 2020, providing a safe space for expression, collaboration, and exchange during the times that we needed it the most. We are grateful for his work in keeping audiences inspired and musicians working for so many years, but especially during the lean and uncertain times of the past year and a half. Chris, thank you for all that you do for jazz in Chicago. Oh, thank you very much, Adriana. This is lovely. Um, a lot of people that I'd, I'd like to thank. Um, wow, this is pretty, has my name and everything. All right. Um, 
there's a lot of people that, this is Fulton Street Collective, and so we are very much that, a collective. Um, the team of Jose Valle on video, uh, Harvey Tillis, still photography, our sound crew, uh, Casey Doyle, Dan Tinkler, uh, Kenny Claymeyer, uh, the sound engineer who built our wonderful system, uh, Dan Dietrich, um, and our curator, Dale Kirp Kirkpatrick, and uh, our founder and our financial angel, Joe Lanasa. This is all a, a collaborative effort to bring these shows uh, to you in person, uh, to jazz fans, uh, hopefully around the world. And uh, the collaboration of everybody involved has made it what it is now. And it's funny to, to start with just doing stuff on Facebook Live and build this whole project up. It really is a credit to everybody involved in the, in the program here at Fulton Street Collective. So I, I accept this award on behalf of everybody here and I appreciate the recognition from the Jazz Institute of Chicago. Thank you so very much. Thanks, Adriana, and thank you, Chris, for being an outstanding advocate for jazz music, musicians, and artists in Chicago, and for keeping jazz music alive and thriving. Now, let's zoom back downtown to a place that has been a beacon of jazz for over 70 years. Hey, everybody, glad you made it over here. We are here at 806 South Plymouth Court at the historic Jazz Showcase. The Jazz Showcase is the oldest jazz club in Chicago, founded in 1947 by Joe Siegel, now owned and operated by his son Wayne. Joe was not only co-founder of the Jazz Institute of Chicago, he was heralded as a 2015 NEA Jazz Master who booked hundreds of acts in his varied locations before landing here in the Printers Row District. His love and passion for jazz drew some of the greatest names in jazz, and all Chicago musicians owe him a debt of gratitude. Joe was known as the Empresario because of his dynamic personality, tenacity, loyalty, passion, and authentic love of the music and the musicians. Personally, I've played here since 2009 when Wayne offered me my first gig as a band leader at the age of 19. Let's head in and see some of the educators that have made our youth shine by creating this woodshed jam session opportunity. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gerard Harris. I'm a board member of the Jazz Institute of Chicago, and I'm also the leader of the house band for our monthly jam sessions. Speaking of jam sessions, we're so happy to be back in person performing for live audiences, and we want to give an extra special thanks to Mr. Wayne Siegel for making this hallowed ground available for us to have our jam sessions, much in the tradition of his father, Mr. Joe Siegel, who was one of the founding members of the Jazz Institute of Chicago. In our band tonight, you're going to be hearing from Mr. Marcus Evans on the drums, Katie Ernst on the bass, and Richard Johnson on the piano. The jam session has a special place in the history of jazz music. Mentorship also does. And that's what we're trying to do here at the Jazz Institute of Chicago with our jam sessions. Our young people come here and they not only learn new musical skills, learning new vocabulary and new musical language, but they also have to learn to meet new people, learn how to navigate social situations. And so therefore, we're providing life skills here. We're going to play a song for you, and it's entitled In a Mellow Tone. Mm-hmm. 
you also very much for joining us this evening. We so appreciate your contributions that you can leave in the comment section, or you can always go to jazzinchicago.org, the Jazz Institute of Chicago's website. Your contributions go a long way towards providing free programming for our wonderful young people, and you're also doing your part to keep jazz alive and well in our wonderful city of Chicago. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> I am here at 47th and King Drive, which some call the epicenter of black culture. In the 1920s, the stroll just north of here, starting on 29th and State Street, was a buzzing spot of jazz and blues clubs, black businesses, and more. Folks would dress up to see and be seen. This continued later in Bronzeville and included this corner, then known as 47th and South Park before it became Martin Luther King Drive in the 1960s. Clubs like the Sunset Cafe, Rum Boogie, Jerry's Palm Tavern, the Club de Lisa, the Savoy Ballroom, the original Regal Theater, the Sutherland, the Parkway Ballroom, and many more featured internationally renowned acts and local favorites, making Chicago and these streets right here a nationally recognized generator of black arts and culture. It was once said that if you stood on this corner on a Saturday in the 40s and the 50s long enough, you could see almost everyone you knew and possibly a celebrity or two. Today, it is the home of the Harold Washington Cultural Center, founded in 2004 by then Alderman Dorothy Tillman. The Cultural Center is now led by her daughter, Jamalita, named for Chicago's first black mayor, it is a center for the city's newest talent, classic shows and performances, and is known for its strong partnerships with local arts organizations. Let's head into their beautiful theater for our second Jazz Excellence Award winner. Thank you, Bobby. My name is Judith Stein, board member and chair of the Education Committee of the Jazz Institute of Chicago, and it is my great pleasure to present our Walter Diet Achievement in Jazz Education Award to Joan Colasso. I first heard Joan when she was starting out as a professional singer with the late Jimmy Ellis, and I followed her career as a jazz vocalist performing in Chicago, then around the world, appearing in the movie Soul Food, and even singing back up for Stevie Wonder. Tonight, however, Joan is being honored for her commitment to teaching and mentoring young people. She began her organization, Timeless Gifts, now in its second decade, to pair professional musicians with aspiring young artists. In that time, she has served over 400 youth. Two years ago, pre-pandemic, Joan and her students were invited to perform in Italy, and but for the pandemic, would have returned last year for an encore. So to you, Joan, for your gift of music and time with young people, the Jazz Institute of Chicago presents you its 2021 Walter Diet Achievement in Jazz Education Award. Congratulations. Thank you, Judith. You're welcome. Thank you to the Jazz Institute of Chicago, Executive Director Heather Robinson, and Education Committee Chair Judith Stein for this amazing recognition. I am honored and humbled to receive the 2021 Walter Diet Achievement in Education Award. Captain Walter Diet. A great jazz musician and educator shared his wisdom and gifts, helping to launch the careers of many iconic musicians and vocalists. He instilled his love, spirit, and integrity for the art of music in those he educated. I was introduced to the jazz community in Chicago by one of his students, my mentor, the late Jimmy Ellis. 
So I pray that through my organization, the last 11 years, Timeless Gifts Youth Program for the Performing Arts, uh, I can honor Walter Diet's uh, legacy by continuing to share my gifts and those of our instructors and project directors with the next generations of performing artists. Just as I believe my mentors, Jimmy Ellis, Val Gray Ward, Lena McLean, Masekwa Myers, Paymoon Rami, to name some, changed the trajectory of my life in a positive way, I seek to do the same for those young souls that are blessed to come to Timeless Gifts. Our youth face serious challenges today, every day. In some cases, it's easier, even safer, to give up and not pursue their dreams, or not even try to dream. But I would argue with a plethora of proof that if you persevere, you will be successful. Timeless Gifts seeks to educate youth in multiple disciplines of the performing arts and give them unique performance opportunities. What we didn't foresee was the great, safe, caring, creative community we've built, the lifelong friendships and extended family that has also come from this effort. It helps more than you know. So giving honor and thanks to God, on behalf of my husband, Larry Hanks, and my family, Timeless Gifts, beloved co-founder, the late Juanita Passmore, our board of directors, parents, and supporters, which includes our principal grantor, the Rolla Klepak Foundation, and our longtime major supporter, Lou Rago, and the Italian American Human Relations Foundation. I accept this award and will honor it by continuing to do all that I can to educate and support our youth in the performing arts. Our motto is, our children are successful because we care. But more than that, when they know we care, they thrive, grow, create, build positive things, and learn to serve. Thank you. What wonderful words, and what a wonderful way to highlight the importance of jazz and arts education. Remember, you can be a part of making sure that jazz music lives and thrives well beyond us and that youth continue to have these incredible opportunities by supporting Jazz Institute of Chicago programming and events. Click the link in the comments or visit Jazz Institute of Chicago website at jazzinchicago.org. Thank you and let's now head a little further south to the South Shore neighborhood for our final performance of the night. Well, hello there. We've made it to the South Shore neighborhoods, which has long been a hot spot for creatives. With its many murals, the South Shore Cultural Center, Jazz in the Alley, back in the day, the Stony Island Arts Bank, and many Black-owned businesses, it was also home to rehearsal spaces for the AACM, Exbag Theater, meeting and painting spaces for Africobra, and Obasi and many artist studios throughout the 60s, 70s, and today. We are here at 2423 East 75th Street at the Quarry Event Center, created and led by the amazing Yvette Moyo of Real Men Cook. This premier event facility opened just a few years ago and includes a jobs program, shared kitchen, weekly jazz sets, as well as youth entertainment. Let's go in and hear our headlining performance for tonight. Thank you, Bobby and Rajiv, and thank you, our virtual audience here with us tonight. All of the programs you got a taste of this evening and more are made possible because of donors like you. Projects like Jazz City, our partnership with the Chicago Park District, the Jazz Band Competition, partnership with Chicago Public Schools and Jazz at Lincoln Center in New York City, our Public Schools Jazz Masters Residency, the Noteworthy Band of CPS Teachers, the Latin Jazz Fest, Watercolors at Navy Pier, and of course, the Chicago Jazz Festival in partnership with the Department of Cultural Affairs in special events remain free and accessible all because of your support. So on behalf of the musicians, audiences, youth and more who are inspired by the legacy of jazz, the joy and the power of the music, we thank you. Click the link in the comments, visit our website, jazzinchicago.org 
backslash 2021 gala. Snap the QR code to give tonight. You are preserving the legacy of jazz and keeping it alive and fresh for generations to come. Now, let's celebrate with some stellar homegrown heroes. I am honored tonight to introduce to you an amazing woman, vocalist, and just a wonderful spirit, a special voice on the music scene today, along with her band of brothers, a group of Chicago All-Stars. Please welcome vocalist Megan McNeil. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am so excited to be here and to be the musical guest for you this evening for the Jazz Institute of Chicago's Gala. What a wonderful evening. I have with me on piano Mr. Brendan Doshi, Mr. Junius Paul on bass, Mr. Greg Archery on drums, and joining us later we have Mr. Corey Wilkes on trumpet. Uh, we're gonna be doing an eclectic blend of tunes that I really love and enjoy, um, and I hope you enjoy them too. Let's do it, shall we?
know you know that song uh, and probably love it just as much as I do. But the next tune we're going to do is an original Nina Simone, or oh, I'm sorry, Nina Simone cover, but original Jack Brel song written in French. This is called Ne Me Quitte Pas, an arrangement that we recorded in April of this year.
And that one featured Mr. Corey Wilkes, my brother and friend, the Mr. Corey Wilkes. Hope you enjoyed that. The next tune is one of my very favorite tunes because I really love the lyrics and they say, the greatest thing you could ever learn is just to, you probably know it, love and be loved in return. This is our take on Nature Boy.
thing you will ever learn is to be to love and to be loved in return and that love starts with self that we can give from our overflow and then receive in the same way such a beautiful thing the next thing we're going to do is an original song recorded in february of 2020 and i'd like to dedicate this song to anyone that's listening uh, and to anyone who has ever been paralyzed or stifled by fear of not being good enough, of not being smart enough, of not being rich enough, or any of these enoughs. This song is called Roses. It is a call to action to tell the people that you love, that you love them while they can hear you, but also to do the things that you are called to do while we have the opportunity to do them. Um, and I hope it resonates with you. Save your sorrows for the last goodbye. Let's give our roses while we're here. In those moments where you're most afraid, so paralyzed by your fears. But what if the sun didn't split the night sky? And what?
Don't save your sorries for the last good bye. Thank you so much for listening to that tune. It's one that is very near and dear to my heart. And the final tune that we're going to do for you, uh, being from the great city of Chicago, Illinois, born and raised on the south side of Chicago, and having all of my aunts and uncles and moms, and not moms, I only got one, kind of. That's a long story. We'll get into that, though. Uh, and dad, for the cookouts and the barbecues and all of that, we would always listen to house music, and I had the opportunity to work with DJ Immaculate and DJ Terry Hunter on a house tune of my own. This is called Getaway. It might be a little different for you know, all of us here today, but we're going to do it because that is true and true and through, right? So this is called Get Away. I want you to give it up one more time for my brother, Mr. Corey Wilkes on trumpet, Mr. Greg Archery Jr. on drums, Mr. Junius Paul on bass, and Mr. Brendan Doshi on piano. My name is Megan McNeil. Thank you so much for allowing me to spend this evening with you. A huge thank you to the Jazz Institute of Chicago. This is a huge honor. Thank you so much for having me. And let's just go out a bang with a bang, shall we? Get your beverages. Let's dance. <laughs> So cold, but I won't lose my soul soon as I hit the door.
were singing and dancing with us. One more time for Mr. Corey Wilkes on trumpet, Mr. Greg Archery Jr. on drums, Mr. Junius Paul on bass, Mr. Brendan Doshi on piano. And my name is Megan McNeil. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. What a set. Thank you, Megan and crew, for taking us from Sade to Nina Simone to house music, another Chicago-made sound on this special night. We're going to leave the South Side and hear a few closing remarks from our board president. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. On behalf of the staff, board, students, musicians, and audiences of this great music, we're thrilled that you took some time this evening to join us on this virtual tour. Now, if you haven't already, please take this moment to get us to our goal tonight. Your gift, no matter how large or how small, will make the difference. Keep Chicago shining as a jazz mecca and keep the spirit and joy of jazz alive. Enjoy your night. Cheers. Cheers. depressed because at home and wherever we happen to be, jazz music would give us humorous as well as accurate information about life as it existed and the beat that we would walk to on the streets made us feel good towards one another and there was a universality and a humanity in the music that made us believe trouble don't last always and we kept on keeping on.